Anita Rivera. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's broadcast, today's Open Your Eyes People. Listen, I have a lot to share with you, a lot of things that continue to take place that prove that we're living in the last days, that prove the words of Jesus Christ. We just got done celebrating Holy Week. Come on, a very important time, the most important time, I believe, outside of the birth of Jesus Christ. And of course, with regard to the soon coming day of the Lord, was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the Passover. Uh, and so, you know, again, I, 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 you know, I think of the words of Jesus Christ when he spoke at the Mount of Olives uh, that took place last week, over 2,000 years ago, about the signs of the times and of the end of the age and the soon coming day of the Lord our God and what Jesus had to say about wars. He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for these things must take place. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. What am I talking about, you may ask? What war and rumor of war? Well, look at the following reports. Fears grow as, uh, you know, for, for World War III. They're saying could be triggered in a matter of a month as Russia military sees has been seen on the move. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's broadcast is Russia. Well, what about them? Well, look, Russia, we have tanks of Russia, we have Russian military tanks moving towards Ukraine. The globe braces for the possibility that World War III could soon erupt. Another report says the following, Ukraine troops are being fired upon by grenade launchers and machine guns as more Russian forces race toward the border. And the following report we're going to really get into right now, the Russians are reportedly using 120 caliber mortars and handheld um, anti-tank grenade launchers to bombard Ukrainian positions. All right, coming in from uh, the economic collapse blog.org uh, excuse me uh, coming from the economic collapse blog.com the question is asked why is a corporate media in the United States so quiet about all that's happening between Russia and Ukraine in the bombardment the outright dare we say possible bullying that's coming from Russia towards Ukraine all in the midst my friends of Putin already Russia's longest leader since Stalin signing a law that may let him stay in power until the year 2036. This is astounding. Russian President Vladimir Putin just earlier today signed a law allowing him to potentially hold on to power until the year 2036, a move that they say formalizes constitutional changes endorsed in last year's popular vote. The July 1st constitutional vote included a provision that reset Putin's previous terms, allowing him to run for president two more times. Now, the change was rubber stamped by the Kremlin controlled legislator and the relevant law signed by Putin that was posted just today, Monday, on an official portal of legal information. Now, the 68 year old Russian president, who has been in power for more than two decades, longer than any other Kremlin leader since Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, said he would decide later whether to run again in 2024 when his current six year term ends. He has argued that resetting the term count was necessary to keep his lieutenants from darting their eyes, and I quote, to keep his lieutenants from darting their eyes in search for possible successors instead of normal work. Now, the constitutional amendment also emphasized the priority of Russian law over international norms, outlawed same-sex same marriages, and mentioned a belief in God as a core value. Russian lawmakers have methodically modified the national legislation, approving the relevant laws. Again, all that's happening, wars and rumors of wars between Russia and Ukraine, in the midst of Putin being the longest standing president in Russia. All right. So again, why is corporate media in the United States so quiet about this? As more Russian forces race toward the conflict zone, the Russians have reportedly been hammering Ukrainian positions over the past couple of days. Now, uh, you know, many people are not keeping their peace about it. Uh, and there are some who are saying that they don't understand why this is not being covered in mainstream media because this conflict has the potential to start an all-out global war, which would really be World War III. Now, Joe Biden apparently is pledging unwavering support for Ukraine. 
And if a Russian invasion actually did happen, that promise of unwavering support would absolutely be put to the ultimate test. Folks, we are now closer to a shooting war with Russia than we have been at any point since the end of the Cold War. But most Americans are totally clueless about the drama that is unfolding on the other side of the globe right now. Now, if a way to defuse this conflict is now found, it is being reported that we could literally be looking at a scenario that eventually leads us into World War III. I'm talking about the United States being 100% involved in this conflict. And the clock is ticking because once Putin gives the order to invade, there will be no going back. Now, just this past Saturday, the, the Ukrainians once again reported that forces on the other side of the conflict zone opened fire. The following is an English translation of a report that was posted on the official website of the Ukrainian military, and I quote, Ignoring the agreements reached on July 22, 2020, within the framework of the tripartite contact group, the Russian occupation forces continue to shell the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine. Since the beginning of this day on April 3rd and 6th, violations of the ceasefire regime by the armed forces of the Russian Federation have been recorded. In the area of the Vostok operational and tactical group near the town of Pisky, the Russian occupiers opened fire with 120 caliber mortars, large caliber machine guns, handheld anti-tank grenade launchers, and, excuse me, and small arms prohibited by the Minsk agreements. Now, near Av... I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly as best as I could anyway. Near Avdi Yifka and Vodianoi in the Azov Sea, you have Russian occupation forces firing large caliber machine guns, anti-tank and automatic machine gun grenade launchers. Technically, the ceasefire that was agreed to on July 22, 2020 is no longer in effect because it expired on April 1st. But the Ukrainians continue to frame these incidents as ceasefire violations. On Sunday morning, the Ukrainian military posted another update, and again, I quote, Russian occupation forces continue to shell Ukrainian defenders' positions in order to further accuse them of violating the ceasefire. During the past 24 hours, on April 3rd, 10 violations of the ceasefire by the armed forces of the Russian Federation were recorded. Now, they're saying in the area of the operational and tactical group East, near the settlement of Sand, the Russian occupiers opened fire with mortars of 120 caliber, large caliber machine guns, handheld anti-tank grenade launchers, and small arms prohibited by the Minsk agreements and from near the village. Handheld anti-tank grenade launchers near the settlements of Avdiyak Vika. Um, also in the... In, also in the settlements of Shryko, uh, Shirokine and Voidian in the Azov region, Russian occupation forces fire large caliber machine guns and grenade launchers of various systems. Unquote. Now, subsequently, folks, the firing seemed to stop, and that is probably because there's a high level of respect on both sides for the religious holiday that was taking place over the past weekend. But it is quite unlikely that, or it's quite likely, excuse me, that the fireworks will resume, just as has been reported on Monday today, and hopefully the corporate media in the United States will start to properly cover this exceedingly important story. At this moment, there are three seemingly unsolvable issues which need to be addressed if this conflict is to be diffused somehow. First of all, when Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky signed Decree Number 117-2021 on March 24th, the Russians essentially considered it to be a declaration of war against them. That document makes it the official policy of the Ukrainian government to reconquer Crimea and the Russians consider Crimea to be their sovereign territory. Now, of course, many don't anticipate that either side will ever back down from this and the Biden administration has been pushing hard to make this a very important issue internationally. Second, the Biden administration has been doing everything that it can think of to try to sabotage the completion of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Selling gas to the Europeans is exceedingly important to the Russians from an economic standpoint, and the possibility that the Europeans could end that relationship is probably the number one thing holding, holding Putin back from launching an invasion right now. But if the Biden administration is successful in killing the Nord Stream pipeline and in getting the Europeans to start rejecting Russian gas, then Putin may figure that there is nothing left to lose. And thirdly, the Russians will never 
ever accept Ukraine joining the NATO alliance. Having NATO forces right on the Russian border is considered to be completely and utterly unacceptable by Russian military strategists. And the Russians are extremely alarmed that NATO forces could soon be deployed to Ukraine on a very, or, or, I should say on a much larger scale. Now the following comes uh, from the Kremlin just this past Friday, and I quote, the Kremlin said on Friday that any deployment of NATO troops to Ukraine would lead to further tensions near Russia's borders and force Moscow to take extra measures to ensure its own security. NATO voiced concern on Thursday over what is said was a big Russian military buildup near eastern Ukraine after Russia warned that a serious escalation in the conflict in Ukraine's Donbass region could destroy Ukraine. Now, it is also being reported that the Ukrainian military is scheduled to hold joint military exercises with NATO in just a few months. This report came out as follows. Ukraine's armed forces have said joint military drills with NATO troops would begin in a few months' time in a move which is likely to infuriate Russia's President Vladimir Putin and still already heightened tensions with Moscow, which has expressed its opposition to the idea. Now, the Trump administration, when they were, uh, you know, you know, the governing authority, uh, didn't provoke Russia. And so for four years, it was relative stability in the region. But now that Biden administration has decided to put enormous amounts of pressure on Russia on multiple fronts, this could backfire dramatically if the Russians decide that military action in Ukraine becomes unavoidable. Now, in recent reports, it's been described that Biden has been a hothead and a warmonger. And at this point, his cognitive decline is apparent to many people, if not to everyone. He is easily persuaded in the fact that his, and the fact that his national security team is packed with extremely aggressive warmongers is not reassuring. This is a report that is not going to end well, but the vast majority of Americans have very little interest in foreign policy at this point, And most of them do not regard Russia as any sort of threat. Not yet, anyway. But once the Biden administration actually gets us into war, and I'm talking about the United States of America, all of a sudden a lot of people are going to wake up and get really upset. Of course, the potential conflict is just not looming. It's not just looming with Russia. We are also stumbling toward potential conflicts with China, North Korea, and Iran. And Biden's national security team does not seem to know how to handle any of those relationships. Now, I want to give you some specific portions of scripture, if you will, concerning war in the last days. I started off tonight's broadcast quoting Matthew chapter 24, verse 6, where Jesus himself said, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But I want to take you to, a note, to some more portions of scripture as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 8 says the following, A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Another portion of scripture is found in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20 that says, You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. The question is, which one has the spirit of Jeremiah upon them? Is it Ukraine or is it Russia? We know that Russia is a major part of end time biblical prophecy, but are they being used by the hand of the Lord or by the hand of the enemy, which is Satan? Another portion of scripture is found in Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all, which would be ideal in the times that we're living in. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4 says, He, the Lord God, shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8 also says, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We have to remember that even though we're talking about wars and rumors of wars, a clear distress of nations upon the earth with perplexity, according to the prophecy in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, uh, verse 5, we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So Ephesians even tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Romans chapter 12 verse 19 tells us, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it 
to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But I want to give you this one particular portion of scripture before I end this broadcast. It really answers the question as to why war is happening. Why is there wars that continue to take place even in the times that we're living in? Why can't people just live in peace? First understand that Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Also understand that we cannot have peace outside of the Prince of Peace. The Bible says that many will say in the last days, peace and safety. But when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But James, I like this portion of scripture in James. Because again, it really hits home concerning war. James chapter 4, starting in verse 1, says the following. And this truly is inspired by the Spirit of God. It says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Think about that for a moment. Here we're, we're being told why war happens. Again, where do wars and fights come from among you? We're talking about Russia. We're talking about Ukraine. We're talking about the war that many people are experiencing, the inner war, the inner struggle. Okay, I guess, you know, again, us not wrestling against flesh and blood, but even, you know, whether it's, you know, the distress upon nations with perplexity that, that is happening in, in the times that we're living in, or the war that's happening within yourselves, we're being told the answer. It's no mystery. We're told that it's because you lust and you do not have. The war comes from your desire for pleasure that war in your members. So something is happening between Russia and Ukraine since the Biden administration has come in. Something is, is happening uh, that is causing the strife to take place. It could be pride. It could be a setup. It could be a false flag. It could be great deception that is happening in the end times. And it all coincides because it's lust. You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. So what do we do? Listen, we need to stop being friends with the world. We need to stop being friends with the enemy. We need to stop making covenant and, and stop, you know, you know, cutting, uh, you know, and having feasts with the, with the enemy, making, uh, you know, marry with, with, with the devil. Please understand that the devil is real. The Bible tells us in the scriptures that many anti, you know, many, many antichrists have come in the last days. I'll prove it to you. It says here in, in um, the portion of, of scripture found in the first epistle of John, verse 18, chapter 2, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the antichrist is coming, even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. We're also told in the same portion of scripture found in the same chapter of, of, of John, uh, uh, you know, chapter 2, but this time in verse 15, it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world is passing away. And the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So this is where we're at in the times that we're living in. And so we're told, stop being friends with the world. Being a friend with the world is becoming an enemy with God. And that's where all your troubles begin. That's why you have the wars and rumors of wars. That's why you have the distress of nations with perplexity. That's why you have many inner struggles. So many people have struggles within themselves. They're wrestling with God. They're trying to be a friend with the world, but still trying to receive the blessing of God. And God's saying, listen, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And you may say, why? How can that be? Well, it says here, it tells you the answer. It says, do you, do, you know, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. 
but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to God so that you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in the times that we're living in. Submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I pray that each and every one of us heed the word of God. As we're seeing all that's happening in the times that we're living in. Listen, whether we go to war or not as the United States... Because we're part of NATO and we're going to have Ukraine's back right now. This administration, whether you and I like it or not, the current administration is going to have the country of Ukraine's back. And, and, and if it means all out war against Russia, that's when, you know, that's what's going to happen. So I pray that you're saved. I pray that you're not struggling with God. I pray that you're not in a wrestling match with the Lord, but that you're born again. Because the safest place to be in the times we're living in is Jesus there is no other place that is saved. There's no other place where there's a sanctuary. Your church, your best friend, your spouse, your 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 you know your your you know your fellow neighbor, they're not your safe haven. They're not your salvation. Salvation is only found in Jesus. Anything in any other way is a scheme of the enemy, is a scheme of the devil. Give your life to Jesus now. The day of the Lord is at hand. And it's not God's will that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. Visit my website, learn more about me and my ministry at www.openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com a warm and special blessing to all those who help support the work of this end time ministry uh, and, and you know you may be tuning in and you'd like to be part of that blessing log on to my website become a monthly donor or sow a one time donation do so as long as you're a cheerful giver log on to my website at www.openyoureyespeople.com www.openyoureyespeople.com also mail me I'd love to receive your mail I, I, I'd like to hear from you guys uh, you know PO Box 218 Church, Texas, 78154. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed and give your life to Jesus because he loves you with an everlasting love. God bless you. Bye-bye.